Yay! It finally worked. I was getting nervous. It didn't look like it was going to work. But hello, everybody. Hello, Jean. And how nice to see Vicki Robles. That's wonderful, sweetie. Kathleen Champ. Hi, darling. And, oh, it's so good. And there's Patricia from Nova Scotia. So, oh, Jean, it's so good. It's so good to see all of you. I sure hope, I sure hope that Alexis is still here. So, long story short, <laughs> it seems like Russia hacked the, the colonial pipeline, which runs right along the East Coast. Well, guess what route I'm taking? Right along the East Coast. So I had to put it back a few days. And uh, hopefully now things have kind of gotten caught up enough that I can get. And when I say Russia, we don't know for sure it was Russia, but we know it was somebody in Russia. And so anyway, you know, I know it's going to be a little more expensive. You know how that happens. Any chance for them to, to bump up the price. But I am so excited. So I had a couple extra days. And I thought the more time went on, I was like, I miss everybody. And then I thought, well, I really want to show them how to fold this fabric basket we started last week. And then I remember somebody recently saying, hey, Deb, can you show us how to make bias binding? And, you know, bias binding is easy to make, but it's easy to forget the method. It's like, what do you do again? Because <laughs> it's not something we make every day. So I'm going to show you how to make bias binding. And in fact, I think we'll start with that first. So let me, I'm so excited to see you. I've, I've been packing today and trying to get my outdoor plants set up so that I can leave them alone for a while. And uh, so anyway, I think I'm pretty far ahead. My son, Christopher, his birthday is today. And happy birthday, my Christopher. And I've got his cake baked. I just have to make the frosting and put it on the cake. And so I'm excited. Hi, Linda McCollum. Hi, sweetie. Linda, could you act as our moderator today? I just realized, oh, I think some of the lymph nodes, I'm very glad we got the, the vaccination. But I think sometimes these lymph nodes, you know, they were, body's working so hard. Mark said he found out that the virus starts, the protection starts in your mouth and nose. And I'm thrilled. He said, we're so tickled. I've got to call Pfizer and tell him thank you because it will help keep the virus coming from coming out of our mouth and nose and it'll catch any virus going in our mouth and nose. So I'm thrilled. Did anyone get their second shot? And how are you doing? Yes. Oh, you're right, Alexis. I have tried to ice in a cake. Tried to, like, hurry and cool it, but the inside is still not cool. And then put a cream cheese icing on it and watch it slide down the cake. Not fun. You pulled weeds. Oh, no. I'm so I've done that. Oh, my gosh. If you take good care of it, maybe it will come back from the roots. So just baby it a little. And I brought home a Harry Lauder walking stitch. Stick. Stitch? Well, it is a quilt show. But I brought home a Harry Lauder walking um, stick bush from my daughter. And it did not like being transplanted. It looks like it was dying. And, oh. You're not getting yours till early August. Okay. And I know each country does it a little differently. But anyway, that walking stick the next year, Mark said, that thing's dead. We need to yank it up. I said, don't touch it. Don't touch it. The second year, it started sprouting new life. Second year. And now it's huge. He said, boy, that thing just keeps growing, doesn't it? <laughs> But, oh, I love a Harry Lauder walking stick because you can do such cool arrangements with those squiggly uh, branches on it. So you've been sleepy like, yeah, that's what we found is we got real sleepy. 
So I'm awfully glad to see you. And I said, you know what? I won't be here next weekend. So I'll be with my daughter, Katie, because I'm going to go up to see my son and over to the Eastern Shore to see my Katie. And so I won't be here in time. So I said, I can't go two weeks without seeing them because I'm kind of fond of you guys. And I would miss you way too much. So I said, I know what. I'm going to schedule it for a little later today. That way I could get out in the yard and get some um, plants straight and get everything watered. And, uh, oh, gotcha. Boy, you get lot. Pacific Northwest is like England. It's either raining or it might soon. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're going to talk. I forget who it was who said, oh, while I'm starting this, I want to show you, in fact, I'm bringing some supplies and I'm going to teach my daughter how to make these because she felt she uses wool and felt beautiful artwork. And I thought, how cool. She might like to make something like this for her artwork. So I did notice he's a little crooked. So I might have to wet him again. I want to straighten him out. Because right now he's got a crooked spine. <laughs> but otherwise, he's really cool. And he's very light and lacy. So, and these are even getting a little stiffer. I'll continue to use some more glue. Because I just rubbed some glue on there. And then here is the dragonfly. And I love it because the wings are pretty translucent. And they show up. But see now that it's dry. See how stiff? And you, you know, you can do the wings, whatever you wish to do with the wings. So I'm really happy. This one I did the wings up a little. And that way you give it a little life and you give it a little re realisticness. And then when you put it on your work then you'll get to kind of see how it's formed. So I just wanted to show you those while I was here. All right. We're going back to how do we make, in fact, I better move this. We're going to do that bass fabric basket in a minute. But what you do is you cut a square of fabric, okay? And this is a square of fabric that I'm going to use to make binding for my grandson's quilt. Of course, I'm doing finishing this quilt at the last minute, but I got this panel for my grandson, Russell, who loves the pout pout fish, just loves it. And I thought at first I would do a kind of tuck in version and then just stitch along the edge. And I soon saw that was going to be a lot of work. And a lot of trimming and a lot of folding and a lot of stuff I didn't want to do. So I said, you know what? No, I'll go ahead and sew on some binding and then do the back part by hand. But anyway, and I want to show you something really quickly that I took... Hold on. I always get a little backwards, but you see, Russell, I sewed his name into the quilt. And then I put Nana Loves You and the date. And then I put down Donnie, too, because Nana loves Donnie, too. And let me tell you, I love writing on the quilts and putting special memories. Because it's always a part of it. So this is, I, I I'm going to tell him this is his nap time quilt. And, uh, but he'll always have, he'll see his name. And, uh, and see, I did the lines like it was under the ocean. And I love using polyester because I can get the eyeballs to pop. And it's just fun. And here's the back. And so I did this. I quilted this on my frame in a couple hours one evening. So I was able to get it done. So I just need to do 
the binding. So, all right. So now you have your square of fabric. And you think, how can that be enough to do the binding? Well, you wait and see. So the first thing you're going to do is come over here. The first thing you're going to do is to come over here and you're going to cut this fabric at a diagonal, okay? Oh, thank you, Miss Linda. He loves pout pout fish, and I gave him a book and an animal, and now I found out he's loving, um, oh gosh, what is the little blue train that has the PBS show? And he is loving Thomas the Train. So that'll be the next blanket he gets. Now, you might wonder, is she just cutting this fabric willy-nilly? No, she's not. What I did is I folded it in half and pressed it. And now I'm just cutting out following the pressing line. Because I'm not good enough to just go cutting across this without some help. Now, okay, so now you take the fabric and hold on just a second. I got to get them set up just right. Hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have to, this is where I have to sometimes go, wait a minute, what was that again? You put one piece this way. And just so to help you see, you've got this piece is number two. This piece was number one. Now you take number one and you're going to flip it over. Okay. Then you take and you get pretty close to your edges, evening your edges up. And then I am going to give this a good pin. So you take that square and I went ahead and um, I went ahead and starched this, okay? Now, I'm going to bring it back over to the sewing machine. Okay. Uh oh, who's having an issue? Oh, pain. I know. Oh, Vicki Lemire. Hello, darling. Okay, come on, camera. Don't act up on me now. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to bring these. You see how that they're kind of, they look like a flag, a double flag. And you take and you stitch these, you stitch these together, quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to stitch these together. All right, and you don't have to be perfect or anything. And what this is doing, by cutting it in half, you're exposing the bias grain. Now, my grandson's quilt doesn't need a bias grain. Bias is to help you get around curves, corners, but I thought I had to make some binding anyway. Might as well make a bias to show y'all because I did have a person say, and I love it. If there's ever something that you want me to show, please just tell me and I will be happy to show. Okay, so now I've pressed it. You get it pressed down good. If it's too bubbly, it means your, your line wasn't quite straight enough. So now what you're going to do that camera's tilting, and I don't want to make you feel a little off kilter. So now what you're going to do, you're going to draw lines 
on this, okay? All right, so you get it like it's a big, pardon me for the hiccup, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to draw lines in this direction, and you decide how big you want your binding to be. So I'm going to make mine two inches. So I have the two inch mark here and I have my marking chalk and I'm going to come along here and just mark it the two inches. Okay. Then I'm going to come up again, put it on the first line. Oops. Now, two inches is kind of tiny, but I don't want it to be a big conspicuous thing on this, okay? And see, it's nice and flat, and I'm marking the two-inch lines down the length. This just helps because your next step is you're going to sew it into a tube, and then you're going to cut a continuous long strip of this. It is, uh, whoever invented this, thank you so much. It is the coolest method to make continuous. And you won't believe how much you get out of this size square. In fact, I forgot to measure my square to see just how big it was. But, um, okay, so marking it one more time. Actually, I'll mark it one last time. All right, and I'm going to come up two inches. Probably good that I didn't do it two and a half. I think I would have been one piece short. All right, so here we go. So now, oh, you probably can't see the lines, but I have nice yellow lines. I have nice yellow lines. Let me hold it close and show you. Do you see the nice yellow lines on this? So, now what you're going to do is you're going to take this, and this is what's really wonky. You are going to take this and see how these angles go opposite, and you're going to come over here, and you're going to sew this into a tube shape, okay? And now, we bring it back to the sewing machine. Now, bias bindings are great if you have a quilt that has scalloped borders, scalloped edges, um, any kind of curve, any angles, because the bias part of, you know, there's the warp and the weft, and those are the length and the width grain of the fabric, and they're pretty stable. They don't move a lot. Well, if you go at a diagonal, you would be surprised at, okay, let me see. This is a straight grain, so there's not much pull. This is the cross, whoops, cross grain, straight grain, not much pull. But watch, this, you'll get a lot of give and use that to help you. And th this way, this won't pucker and act ugly when you're trying to put it on around curves. And if you've ever bought bias tape, you'll know it is cut on the diagonal and that you, you can use that to do your skirts and it will give and instead of you having odd crunchy places and gathers. And the bias definitely gives. Okay. So now we've gotten this sound. Now we're going to turn it inside out. And I want to go ahead and press the seam I just sewed. Because once I cut this, I want it to lay flat and pretty. So let me move my ruler out of the way. All right. Now see how it lays beautifully now? When it was so wonky at first, you think, oh my gosh, I must be doing something wrong. But you're not. Just trust, trust the directions. This is one of those things that's like, you just have to 
trust the directions. Now, I probably should have been more careful that the lines don't perfectly line up. So I'm going to be careful when I go to cut this. But now you come in and you want to press that like this. Okay. I'm just pressing that seam. Both my seams are nice and flat. Okay. Now, I'm going to come in here and start cutting this. Okay. And as you cut, you just follow the lines. You slightly offset it, and then as you cut, you just follow the lines. And you can see it makes really nice strips. You know what, I didn't offset this enough, so what I'm going to have to do is cut the strips and then sew them together. And Oh, poo, I really wanted to get the continuous cutting, but I didn't, I overlapped them only, not enough. So remember I told you my lines didn't line up good? That was my problem. All right, so just make sure that when you go to sew the last seam, that you offset it a full amount. Because I'll still be able to use this, but I'm going to have to make my own joints. All right. So then I will come back. Make sure you offset the edges when you do that last seam. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put this together. And I'm going to stitch from, you see how I put them at perpendicular angles? Because I'm going to start stitching up here at this corner and stitch down, whoops, let me move it back just a little. I've got this little piece hanging, so let me just pull that off. I've got to make sure that I get a nice clean seam. So I lay this horizontally, lay this vertically. Okay, nice and even across. Then I come in at this angle. Come on. Come in at this angle and stitch right across the diagonal. If you're a little bit nervous about sewing on a diagonal, then feel free to mark it or press it so you can sew right across the diagonal. Then, once I open it out, I've got a continuous piece. And I do like doing it this method because you're spreading out that seam junction so that you, and what that means is when you fold this in half, if you did the line straight up and down, which is the easiest way to join them, the problem is when you bent it over like this, the, this hole, both sides would have that heavy seam right there together. And by laying one horizontally, and the other vertically and sewing at an angle, then you spread out. See how you spread out the seam diagonally? So when it's sewn, when it's folded over and sewn, see how it's all spread out and you won't get that lump. So this is how you make bias binding. And let me show you. Do you see that stretch? So if you were going around the edge of something, look, see, it just pulls nicely. Where if you try to do it this way, 
doesn't move much. This way doesn't move much, but you've got that bias. All right. So now, and if anyone has any, turn it inside out to press. That's, and you know what some people do? They do press it inside out and open the seams. And if you really insist, if you really don't want any kind of lump where the joins are, you open that seam allowance and then turn it back right side out and then start cutting it. It just makes it that much smoother. So, okay. So I will finish this and get my grandson's quilt done. And the bias makes it real easy to do nice, good corners on your binding because that's important. And remember, try to have nicely trimmed quilt edges and have them be full, right, too. Because once you put the binding on, you want the whole binding to be nice and plump. That's what judges look for. All right. So let me bring back our basket. We're not going to be here as long today. We'll probably finish up about by uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time because I still have to icing that cake. So, or frost that cake. And I've got to get this binding on, on the first part on the machine so then I can go up and sit down with my feet up and finish it. So, oh, thanks. And I will do it again. And offset it more. I thought I had offset it enough. You really do have to offset it a whole the whole row. And what I mean by that is when you went to take and stitch it together that last time, this one part has to be up here hanging out by itself. Duh. It can't be half of it. it. has to be the whole thing. So we will. We'll do this again just to show you the continuous binding. All right. Now, last week I was trying to do this, and it was acting up because I didn't have any pins down here with me. So you've got to. Uh, <laughs> I'm making a devil's food cake with homemade, cho ho homemade chocolate frosting. For my son. He said anything chocolate on chocolate is good for him. All right. So let me pull these out real quick to show you. But it really, really helps if you have the pins. Okay. I thought when I realized I was like, oh, gosh, I don't have time to run upstairs and, and get my... I keep different supplies in different places. But I usually... I keep all of my little clips and hairdo things upstairs because I usually do my binding upstairs in my recliner watching TV. So that's my favorite, favorite thing to do. But I do like using this foam core board with a little bit of flannel on it. It really helps hold my work and then I can push pins right in it and carry it with me. All right, so you have 10 strips this way, 10 strips this way, and you make sure that you've got them nice and tight. That will help hold your basket together while you do the final weaving. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to bring up this one. This is going to bring the two, see how you have the two corners here, right here. See, it's like a 45 degree angle. You're going to bring this one up and you're going to weave it into this side. So you ignore the first one. You pick up the second one and you go this way. Then you ignore the next one and you pick up the next one. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me get it right. I don't want to mess it up. Okay. All right. See, because you have to be careful which one you pick up. If you were to pick up this one to do something with it, it's going to be a little tricky. Although, I guess you could go under this way. But what you're going to do is you're going to maintain your 45-degree angle. Okay? So, I guess I could do this and then this. And you're just going to go back and forth, back and forth. Continuing, and it's got to be at the 45-degree angle. 
All right. Here we go. Ugh, it's pulling everything. All right. So, this one goes up. It goes behind this one. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make the corner. All right. Then this one is going to go behind this one and over this one and behind this one. See how it's kind of confusing if you don't have your pins? Because at a certain point, I'm going to need... All right. So then... And by, by running and keep them at that 45 degree angle, then this one's going to come up here, go back, go in front of the green one, go in back of the blue one, and in front of the pink one. And you just take turns picking up each one of these sides. So here, this is on top. This one will go behind. Then it'll, whoops, nope, pardon me. The other one was behind. This one goes on top like this. It, it looks confusing, but it's not if you just do it one strip at a time. All right. This one goes this way, behind, in front, and behind. So see, I'm just going in and out, in and out. And now you can start to see that little pouch that's forming. Just take turns grabbing, grabbing a piece once from this side, once from that side. Now here, this dark blue went on the outside. So this is going to go on the inside, then come out, then go in. And you would think, well, how does it not have holes in it if you're doing a 45 degree angle? It fills it all right in. Okay. Now I'll grab this one this time. And this one goes behind, over, behind. Over, there, and behind. And just make sure you pull them nice and snug, unless you want a basket that drops berries. But what ends up happening is if I need to stop for a minute so that I can get my pieces organized, okay, then I just take a pen and I put it on my last intersection, okay? So hopefully you can see. Now let me see. Do I need to turn off that light? Let me see. Okay. Sometimes this camera, just the way it does, it if you have too bright of a light for a period of time, it'll darken it. And then it makes it worse. All right. So I'm just trying to make sure that it's not too tight, not too loose. So the last one I did is... Is it this one? Let me see. One, two, three, four. Mm. One, two, three. Nope, it's this side. Okay. So here, this one, this one went under, so this one's going to go over. And it's that under and over and under and over that gives the basket strength and holds the pattern that you are making. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to go ahead and now move that. But just make sure you don't want to pull your pieces too tight and you don't want them too loose. Okay, so now I did the last one on this side. I'm going to start on this side. And on here, see how this is loose? And so this next one's going to have to go around the outside. And it's just over and under. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm worried it is sounding like gobbledygook, and I don't want it to. And then it goes over. So it goes over, under. Yep. All right. Under. Oops. Nope, I did it wrong. Hold on. Over, under, and then over. Okay. This is where you really need your clips because to get ready and do the other side, if I let it go, the tension, I, I'm just not coordinated enough to keep the tension right. So by putting this on here, 
now I get to go back over. Oh, and another thing. One, two, three, four, five. I only have one more. Oops, I might have used too many on this side because I need to guess. That's one of my problems. Okay, five. You've got 10 each way. Five go to this corner. Five go to that corner. So now I've got to pull out a couple of these. Let's see. Oh, man. I've got to pull out this one, too. All right. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I've got one more over here. Something doesn't sound right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Okay. Well, got to trust my counting. All right, so now I'll come over here, and it, the last one went on the outside of that pink, so now I'm going to come up behind it, go over that one, come under this one. All right. Well, I, now this, this, oh, okay, I think I just didn't have the tension right. So what I'm going to do now is... Put this pin here, and I'm going to go around and do another side. And this way, all the pieces will start to come up. So I'm going to take off these pins. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I'm going to leave these other pins in place. All right. So now I've got five and five. Now, I'm going to come up with this one first, and I'm going to come and go on the outside of this one, on the inside of that one, on the outside of this one, and on the inside of that one. And I'm going to put a pin here. All right. Now, I'm going to take this one and... Right here with this color, this one was on the outside. So now I'm going to take to bring this whoop this one up, and it's going to go underneath. Now how? Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, here we go. Got to bring this up. See, this is what makes it a little tricky. But just kind of take your time, and the, this one's going to go on the outside then under, then outside, then under, and then outside. So there we go. Now we've got two on here. And the more you get, the better they will, they'll behave. All right. Oh, I see why I got them a little confused, because the one piece went all, all the way through. So now... This next one goes behind this green one and in front of this pink, behind the blue, in front of the black, and behind. That's how I got confused to the other side because you are weaving them. It just doesn't look at, oops, made a mistake. So let me quickly come in here and correct it. All right. Yes, that's right. All right, I have two more that I have to go through here. This one, it, the pink one went under, so this is over, under, over, under, and over. Okay, then real quick while I'm here, I'm going to do this last one. But you do all four sides, and then the trick is to bring it up and to run these all together. So that, there we go, right there. And just keep your tension, check for tension, check to see that it's even. Because I want this to be a, a, ba a real basket, and I want it to hold things. So now, what we have is we have the two sides. And what we will end up doing is continue weaving these together and if you have the right angle you might have to work on that but if they're at the 45 degree angle they'll weave right past each other 
And then, but see how right now it's, it's a little too level. So just make sure to bring them back up to the 45 degree. And then that way they'll keep weaving. Like these will go in and they'll just weave together. And then when you get to the very top, you'll do things like take the outside one, but this still has more weaving to go. And you'll kind of tuck it in behind in an area that will make it nice and snug. But do all four sides first. And then when you bring them up, then, okay, now we've got, and if they're at the right angle, then you weave them, continue weaving these two sides together with what you have left here. So I will bring this back and show you when I'm done with my travel. But right now, let's go look at your photos. Okay? I like weaving. You just have to make sure that you have all your tools right and you keep working on getting the angles right. And oh, I forgot to bring, I, I meant to bring a basket to, that I've made to show you. Because I did that about 20 years ago and really enjoyed it. Whoops. I just pulled off the... <laughs> Let's see. Oh, just to show you really quickly, I'll show you the pictures of this basket. Now you don't, it looks pretty. In fact, you know what? I think that's the way they're storing. They're using the basket to store the clips. They've already tucked it all. You can tell they've tucked everything in. And they're just using it to, that's their pretty way of storing. The so now see how, see how you have all these little pieces that when they come together, because some of them are shorter than the other, some are longer, depending on how far it had to weave. And what you do is you're just going to take, take it and stick it in behind another one so it's nice and snug. And if you want, you can even put a little dot of glue so it will really hold. But I wanted you to be able to see these photos. And here is what I first did, taking 10 this way and 10 and. She did a remarkable job of getting these in nice and tight because keeping it snug at every step really makes the weaving so much easier. Now, she did her two edges, and now she's just bypassing them. But see how you have to keep that 45-degree angle so you'll have enough intersections. Uh, mine was looking kind of sloppy, and this is nice to show you. This is what it should look like. And when you fit, get to the top, you're going to end up with a couple places where it's too long. You're going to trim it just enough that it can tuck down in a nice tight place. And consider putting a drop of tacky glue to keep it there. Or you can do a couple stitches. And this is what I just did, bringing up the two five from each side in that corner. And that's where it really helps having that. And it's just under, over, under, over, and so on. And the, as she brings up the next side, they will weave into this. Really cool-looking basket. I love that diagonal weave. Isn't that pretty? Now, she's got these on because they're, I, think, I think she's holding them there to do the tucking. But maybe that's her way of displaying them, too. And you start off with a two-and-a-half-inch strip of fabric. Now, mine, so mine are less. That this person has put steam seam 2 tape. Then you peel off the paper. You press it in so it's one piece with both edges tucked in. Then you put another piece of steam seam tape, and you bend it over and give it a good press. And now you have a nice little tidy strip to use. I also put fusible interfacing on my strips so that they were stiff to do enough to do a good fold and to hold a good shape as the basket. This is when I was up working on it last weekend. And you see my hands. I'm showing you how to take five of each side and start the weaving. 
And here is my grandsons holding hands at lunch. I just think this is so cute. They are very, very fond of each other. Isn't that nice? You always want that. You want brothers to love each other. My girls were that way. Very, very close. All right. I think that's... Oh, I, there's one more thing. My daughter Katie surprised us with a message. She had a surprise lamb this morning. She thought the mama wasn't going to, to kid until, um, or foal until next, in a few more weeks. And here she woke up this morning. It's still got the umbilical cord hanging there. And the mom is just cleaning it off. I just, it, these lambs are just so cute. I can't wait. I get to go hold it. Oh, I'm going to have fun. All right. So let's go back to the, go to Betty's album. And Betty did this. Look at this. She finished her mosaic. She found a way to make it that oval shape, which to me is perfect for the design. And this was all done with paints. She took my pattern. And she used chalk and put it on black, a black background. And then she took and filled in the spots with paint. And I think it's beautiful. Way to go, Miss Betty. I know she's got to be very pleased with that. Here it was before she took and cut it into the oval shape. So she's thinking now, I might want oval too. That's pretty awesome looking. Then Miss Bonnie's been busy. She has her COVID quilt that she worked on, which I love. She did a great job of that. And then here's her design wall with a few things she's been working on. This is a gecko quilt. I love the way she's got the colors. And here is a turtle quilt that she'd done before. And then she's working on her row by row and her farmer's wife. Okay, and then I want you to see her row by row. She has gotten so much done on it. That's fabulous, fabulous. I love all the different colors and the shapes are awesome. And you know what I love? Look at the secondary designs. Here is the block right here. And this is a kind of um, pinwheel or whirly, whirly gig pattern. But look what happens when you put them beside each other, it almost does a lightning bolt shape. And that's called secondary design. Up here, you've got two. Um, oh, my, my mind just went. Monkey wrench blocks. And in the middle here, the secondary design is a square right there. So when you're getting ready to work on a quilt, keep an eye on the secondary patterns sometimes they're even prettier than the initial block. All right, Miss Charlene is next. And she has about finished her gorgeous, gorgeous garden gate quilt. I just love it. She's got a butterfly. She's got a little chickadee. And she's got some fabulous, fabulous flowers there in fact okay hold on <laughs> why am i oh because you know what i didn't sleep enough because i want to be able to get to sleep tonight but these are somebody you you can tell them <laughs> i i used to grow those i love them too beautiful oh there goes the brain if i don't get enough sleep watch out okay get this is our new member i'm hoping she's going to be joining soon and her name is Charlene, and I've got a website that I will share with you for her. She's got an Etsy site, and it is wonderful. Her husband does these nice wood carvings while she does all kinds of quilting and sewing. She has a collection of bags that she sells on Etsy. Look at this. Is that smart? That would go to any boardroom or legal office anywhere she does really and look at her landscapes isn't this fun and you can she sells them too at very reasonable prices too i love it i love it here's some more of her husband's carving isn't that just wonderful and his prices are very reasonable 
So check them out, and I will make sure that I give you her website. But Charlene, and I'm trying to remember what her husband's name, but it, they do beautiful, beautiful work. And she's joining our group. I thought, hmm, I've got to, I'll find her Etsy site for you, and I will put it below. All right. Dolores, oh my goodness, Dolores has been so busy, look at her beautiful iris, look what she, the design she did, using my idea, she came up with her own design, and there, she's starting to compose it, so see how she's drawn it out, and she's got a background, but then she'll go and drop the fabrics in, I love it. Just beautiful. And then look at this. It looks like a punch bowl turned into a fountain. Is that? I just love creative people. They can look at one thing and dream of something else. Look at those gorgeous irises. Look at her garden. Tons of irises. What joy. Beautiful, beautiful. And here is her progress so far on her mountain meadow quilt. I love it. I love the birch trees she put in that. Isn't that wonderful? And I love her mountain placements. Beautiful. Very good. Thank you so much, Miss Dolores. All right. Then we've got Diana Wright, and she did the cutest, cutest um, Edita Sitar dots pillow or dots or spots. I'm trying to remember what she called it. But, and here it is on her design wall so that she could get them placed just where she wanted. And then she, oh, she went to a sale recently and got some bolts of batting. And I love the rack that Marty made for her. So let's see. Here is Let It Rain and look at the cute flowers. What a neat quilt. She really comes up with some wonderful edited sitar patterns that she creates into works of art. I love the pillow sitting there. It's so inviting. All right. Let's see. And then here's a new quilt she's working on. Isn't it beautiful? So oh, very good job. Thank you, Anna. All right. Whoops. Sorry about that. Let's see. Jamie. I hope Jamie is doing well she has redone her her crafting studio because she is going to be doing some tutorials for a larger uh craft channel so i'm thrilled for her we love our jamie and she's so talented in fact it says here jamie's craft world and ma at ma hashtag mom life Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, but look at this. Isn't that great? She said now it's her dream studio. I think so. That is just gorgeous. You know, we work hard nowadays, and we stay very busy doing the best for our families, everyone. And it's nice to have the thing that you love doing the most. And here are the final pictures of Miss Jody's wonderful garden gate. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful work. Her fabric choices are amazing. Love it. All right. Let's see what else we now have. Miss Nadine, she's been so busy at work. This is her busy season. And look at this. Isn't that sweet? She has little crafts she can do when she's exhausted at night just so that it kind of soothes her soul. It relaxes her and soothes her soul. So I love her talent. And what a great idea when you don't have time to do a big project, find a nice little one to do. Okay? Just something to kind of, nothing relaxes me like my crafting and my art. Patricia Fry. She had a wonderful Mother's Day gift from, I think it was a grandson who did her flower beds for her. Doesn't that look like the beach community that she lives in? 
and her John Wayne quilt she's been working on. Very nice, Miss Patricia. Then, here we go. Ice Prin Princess Patricia, or Ice and Fire, Patricia from Nova Scotia. I love her desktop or tabletop weaving. It is gorgeous. Very rustic. And look, her brand new friend. And she got a half price sale, which always makes the friendship start on the right foot. So I love it. It's a wonderful machine. I think she's going to be a lot. Look at this cute pen cushion and tool caddy that she made. I love it. So we're real excited to have. Oh, and she finished cutting her background for her binding tool quilt. She had just enough. That's awesome. I just love it. You know, I tell you what, I hope you're working on this binding tool star. When I get back, we are going to return to it because the binding tool star is one of the best quilt patterns I've ever made. All right. So thank you, hon. And then Sandra, I love Sandra's take on the mosaic koi quilt. And don't forget, I have free patterns. I will give them to you if you just drop me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com. Oh, beautiful, beautiful work. And she took the idea and used ink tints. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? I love your creativity and I adore that you go off on your own journey, that you don't feel like you've got to just follow the leader. So way to go. Look at this gorgeous flower she did. Isn't that something? So way to go. I love it. Okay. Now we're almost at the end. Susan. My Susan has been so busy. So we'll show you some of the things she's been working on. But Mother's Day, look what sweet Nikki presented her with for her gift. Isn't that wonderful? Way to go, Nikki. That's beautiful. Now she's got a wonderful tool caddy right there at her machine. So thank you, Miss Sue, for all the work you do and all the joy you bring us. All right. Now who else? Let's see. I think that's it. Okay. So, I appreciate you spending some time with me today. Let me turn this lamp back on. It's a little dark. But thank you for spending this time with me. Just remember, there will not be a new live next week. And um, who knows? I might just surprise you and do a little live up at my son's so that you can see me with my grandsons. But I'm not promising. First, I'm going just to have fun and to visit. But you never know. But anyway, but thank you for spending this time. And y'all are the best. And it was so nice. Oh, there's Betty Middleton. And it was nice to see people um, show up that I hadn't seen in a while. And Vicki, we were so glad to see you. And Vicki Robles and Lemire both popped in. So... I will continue to work on this basket and show you that next time. And just remember, our next Sunday live will be May 30th, okay? And um, have a good week. And please do something wonderful for yourself because you can't take care of other people unless you first take care of you. So take good, good care, and I'll give my grandsons a great big hug for you, and I will see you May 30th, a Sunday, but I'm going to be back before that on our Art Thursday. Can't wait to see what we're going to start doing for Art Quilt Thursday. Well, thank you again. Wish me well going up 95. I haven't driven that much on an interstate in the last 15 months, but I have gone out to practice, so we'll see how it goes. Take good care, everybody. You mean the most to me. Take good care of yourselves. If you haven't been vaccinated, please, I, I, I'll send you fabric. Just get vaccinated, okay? Please do. 
That's the fastest way for this country to get back to life. All right. Take good, good care. So good to see all of you again. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.